Hello everyone and welcome to another Getting Stuff Painted, my bi-weekly update give or take on the miniatures I've been painting for the games we cover here on the channel. There isn't a huge number of models this week, but there is a lot on the larger side of the miniature scale I guess you could say. So I do have a lot to talk about as always, painted mostly or entirely in some cases with Citadel Contrast paint. And we'll just talk about it and the games we've covered, or are covered here, but big bunch of Crisis Protocol, most of it is Crisis Protocol. Tiny bit of Elder Scrolls Call to Arms, a little bit of Battletech, and a little bit of Misc Scenery slash 40k, kind of, uh, that I'll talk about first, actually. So with that, let's just get started, and yeah, we'll talk this through. So here is the assortment of, technically, scenery that I've painted this time. We have six shell casings here. I, I'm not going to spe uh, be specific about what these are. Because I want it to be a little bit of a surprise or part of something larger that I haven't ever shown off in this series yet uh, and but will do once I'm able to so they're just from that and they're there basically just as a matter of hey I painted a bunch of these they are 3d printed um, you can kind of see the mold lines because I've used contrast paint I might need to really zoom in but it's just Militarm gray lead belter silver and aggressor shade but I'm just I'm pointing this out also because Hopefully the camera is uh, able to pick this up. You can see the mold lines because the contrast paint kind of seeps in and brings out the mold lines. That's important because when we eventually talk about the third party Hulkbuster there, he's also a 3D print, but it just shows the, well, he might be injection molding. I don't know, but like 3D printing has just come leaps and bounds over the past few years. I, I'm not in that space. I have friends who are, but this is an example of something that's done on a cheaper or simpler filament 3D print and that as we talk about and I'll show you properly later, is a ridiculously high quality 3D print for an unofficial product. But anyway, let's focus on the scenery for now. Six shell casings, not mentioning anything else about those yet. This is the sort of 40k thing I was talking about. I, I painted these two things in the exact same way. I believe this was from an ancient 40k 5th edition, maybe 6th edition scenery kit it came with like um a satellite thing like a console uh, a crashed escape pod um and stuff like that and i actually just i found it it fell out of a a box at some point and i was doing some cleaning and i actually just stumbled on it because i was clearing some old stuff out i was like oh i can actually just use that as kind of a generic thing the only real icon that ties it to 4k is the aquila aquila whatever it's called right there so it's pretty hard to see and it would make an, a decent like escape hatch or whatever else for something like Wasteland Warfare. So I thought, you know what, I'll just paint it. It'll be super quick, especially because I'm doing this. This is the unofficial base that came with the unofficial Hulkbuster that I'm gonna talk about, but I happen to have the correct size base um, to use an official base. So I didn't need to use this, which is just as well because it's not the right size. So this I decided, oh, it's just like a futuristic or a quasi-futuristic metal grain. It could be part of a factory. It could be part of Wasteland Warfare, Crisis Protocol anything that's in a city section really it just it fits that kind of build so why do nothing with it why not just paint it so the strat i used for both of these spray painted them silver gave a dry brushing of the army painter dry rust which is my favorite for doing a rust effect i think it's fantastic for that and um, a little bit of aggressor shade and then a little bit of dollops of frost heart blue just for some lights on the poor old escape pod or yeah, escape tunnel whatever you want to call it simple as that just a little bit of color and there you can kind of actually see the the lines of how it was printed there like there is individual lines I'm not sure if they're they're picking up on the camera but that's on the underside of the base so it doesn't really matter but you know, just as a matter of note did a little bit of scenery just a little bit so let's quickly move on because I realize I actually have a few stories to tell and there is one involving one of these so for Battletech I'm, I'm slightly off center by the way so I'm sorry if I keep on putting things slightly to the left I'm trying to I've got a really sore back so I'm trying to sit up straight and not like hunched over the camera so I'm slightly more to the left than I would be normally so everything's going to be slightly to this side of the camera I can only apologize anyway we have an Orion and a longbow and it's my first go at painting a uh, uh, House Karita slash Draconis, Draconic, I always forget which it is, um, combine colour and I want to make a, a, a unit of those or just a general mechs to have just as another faction that's pretty easy to paint and the story I have to tell is regarding this longbow which I did unbox on the channel because I believe it came from a blind box, uh, one of the blind boxes I unboxed on the channel and I didn't realise at the time but have since noticed since painting it, it's actually assembled incorrectly and 
uh, you can tell because it has two of the same, it has two of the left missile pod and this one's just been assembled upside down. You can see it better there, see the engine and then the, the shielding over the top of the, or the exhaust port, whatever. It's on the underside, it should be on the top side. That's how it's supposed to look from the top and again the side is upside down. So when they were assembling it in the factory in China, they accidentally grabbed two of the same side, just bunged it on upside down. I never noticed, no one in the unboxing noticed either. But hey, I've noticed now, it's pretty fun. Uh, the company or the factory or one of the factories that assembles stuff for Catalyst Game Labs actually uploads YouTube videos of the factory line assembling boxes for Battletech. I, I don't know how I got served one, I just randomly got suggested one one day when I was browsing YouTube. It's actually quite hypnotic to watch the factory process, so it's pretty neat. This is just one that happened to slip by their initial checks before they start uh, doing the boxes and stuff and didn't spot it when they were gluing them together. So it's fine, he's a little bit of a franken mech as a result, but hey, fancy enough. The Orion I don't have in my Mercenary Band colours, I hate the Orion, I don't like how it looks at all, so I didn't really want one in my colours, so that's why I was quite happy to use it as a guinea pig for doing House Kurita. So this is Bow Red Contrast Paint with the uh, oh the new the new red wash that Citadel did with the next wave of contrast paints. I don't remember offhand what it's called. I'm going to have to write it on the screen. But I used that uh, on top, and then I did a dry brushing of a new type of red I was testing out. It's a bit of a warmer red. I don't really think it's picked up that much on the upper raised ledges or edges, I should say. But I'll put that on the screen as well including the brand name because it's it's brand new to me, it's just something I've been testing. I did the same on the Hulkbuster for its red parts for the record. And green is just um, Striking Scorpion Green Lead Belcher Silver and uh, I did, not Lead Belcher, uh, yeah it is Lead Belcher, I'm thinking of the wash. Why, uh, no, no, there we go, I blanked on the most commonly used wash. That's embarrassing and then just some like burnt flock for the bases. So that's how I'm going to do House Korea MX from now on. I don't have any iconography for them, I know you can buy like third party transfers, put on them and stuff, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, turned out okay, and that means we can have some red mix for the table once I start getting some duplicates in the future, hopefully. And inevitably when you use this flock, some of it always just doesn't quite stick, but that's okay. So just here as a matter of note, one miniature from Elder Scrolls Cult Arms, I believe this is the mercenary Kajaro, who may actually be one of the NPCs in Skyrim I have never spoken to. I presume he's one of the, like he's a named Khajiit in the the outdoors village outside Whiterun, if I had to guess. I've never talked to him, I don't think, I, apparently like you can get him as a companion. I don't think I've ever done that quest, but uh, it's simple enough to paint him since he's mostly just wearing you know, plate mail, so it's just like Belcher Silver with non oil. Uh, for his skin tone, I believe, that, I believe I used Watered Down Fire Slayer Flesh with um, non oil as well. And I try to do a little kind of like, because he's standing at a campfire, which is also what leads me to believe he's at that one outside White Run. Uh, so I tried to do a little bit of fire reflection. I'm not really sure it came out super great, but you know, it's okay. It's a mixture of Iron Jaws, Yellow Yandin, Yellow Griffhound Orange, and that's it, basically. So just as a matter of note, there's two more to do from that box. I haven't just, uh, I've, I've not quite got around to doing them. They're just a generic Ultimer and generic Khajiit. I think I mentioned that last time because we I did the rest of the box last time. But that's just one more from that box, just working through them slowly. And just there, as a matter of note, with one of my dog's hair stuck to him, that it's something I've done. So then we're on to talking about a bunch of Marvel Crisis Protocol and everything else is official models I've painted up. But let's talk about the big one that I actually have a story to tell about, which is an unofficial sculpt for the Hulkbuster. I love the pose, it's him gearing up. You can optionally have him come with a gigantic plasma cannon. This is a reference to how he fights in the Marvel vs. Capcom video games. I opted not for, uh, to get that because it's it's way too big. Um, I would like if you like it to be perfect if you didn't pick that option that this hand was up as an open, so he's doing like a you know repulsor blast. That would be the only thing I'd change. Although it kind of looks like he could be punching the Hulk, but he wouldn't still be suiting up if that's what he was doing. And this uh, I would describe this as more appropriately sized for Crisis Protocol because the actual Hulkbuster miniature, as much as I love it, the pose is a little meh and he's way too big and I presume the reason for that is because he had to be bigger than the Hulk and they did quite a big Hulk. 
because in the MCU, which is the primary design for this, if you haven't seen comic book Hulkbusters, the one in World War Hulk is awful, and the one in Civil War 2 looks like War Machine, for reasons related to that story. So they don't look that great. Also, Black Panther has a Hulkbuster that I, the first time I saw it, I, well, when my friend told me about it, I didn't believe him, and then when he showed me, I just laughed. It looks so bad. So this MCU Hulkbuster is fantastic design, love it. But because of In Age of Ultron, he is larger than the Hulk. I guess they had to keep that design ethos when they were making the miniature. And that's why the Hulkbuster official mo model for Crisis Protocol is so large. He's as big as Dormammu. Whereas this model is much more appropriate the size. If we just take Charles here, I know he's sitting down in a chair and all that, but compared to a regular sized person, it's much more appropriate. He is slightly bending his legs. So imagine if he was standing up taller, he would still be a little bit taller. But even just there, he could even be a baller. Uh, even just that is enough that it's much more appropriately sized, especially because you can see Iron Man as like regular Iron Man inside the suit in this version, so you know it is appropriately sized for him since that's the right size of him for a Crisis Protocol Mini. So just an all round fantastic model. I saw a really well painted version of this online, which made me hunt it down. I think there's eBay sellers. I got it from an Etsy seller. They used a fantastic quality 3D printer, no idea what, but there's no mold lines. There was a little, there's a few little strands I had to cut off to clean it up when I got it, but it went together fine, cleaned up nice. And my paint job ain't great, but the model itself and the quality was insanely impressive. Like I, I'm blown away by how high quality this is as a 3D print, especially because it wasn't that expensive either. So yeah, if you want it for yourself, you can go track it down. The colors, I'd already described how I used the reds for the Battletech miniatures, so this was the same. The yellow is Iron Jaws yellow, I used some non-oil, I used some of that red wash. Uh, the same paint to dry brush as well. The blues are a mixture of Frost Heart, um, Calgar, no not Calgar blue, whatever the light blue normal Citadel paint is, it's similar to Calgar blue but a bit warmer, and Lib Ultra Silver. Simple as that. I added a coffee cup there to make it look like he's just off break. But yeah, I love this version of the Hulkbuster. As much as I like the official version, I wish the pose was a bit cooler and I wish it was a bit smaller <laughs> to, to fit more aptly. But yeah, even compared to Ultron who is flying but he is still taller than your average miniature which is what he should be but not so large that he looks ridiculous so you'll definitely be seeing this in a video at some point because I love it this is my favorite rendition of the Hulkbuster I've seen in this third party made up sculpt so take from that what you will and if you want it for yourself it's easy enough to track down. On the subject of Ultron and back to just pure official miniatures now I finally finished the Earth's Mightiest Heroes, whatever it was called, starter box with the completion of Ultron and his drones. It took me only two years, I don't know, maybe like a year, just over a year. So we have them. The drones were the thing putting me off because I was like, oh, they look kind of cool, but they they look also like complicated once they're fully assembled. So complicated, the camera's like, nah, I give up. But the painting of them, I, I, I wanted to do something special. Like a lot of people do some really cool stuff with how they do Ultron's paint. Like the metallic look, they, they do it really cool. No idea how they do it, wish I did. But I just settled for lead belch or silver with Necron compound, dry brushed on top, non oil, and then a little bit of flame dramoth orange, whatever that new orange contrast is called, for the parts that are orange. Then that's simple. Silicanum grey, uh, storm vermin fur and ooh, Agros Dunes for the dust that they're kind of crawling out of on this one. For Ultron himself, um, I positioned his cape slightly differently to how it is officially because I didn't like how it looked officially because it would look like he was setting his own cape on fire with how much exhaust fumes he's setting off. Because to me, the pose always implied to me he was swooping down dramatically. Like, haha, I've arrived, not haha, I'm taking off. Because if he was taking off, yes, his cape would be angled downwards and he'd be setting it on fire. But if he's coming down, the wind would be billowing up. That means his cape would be billowing out. And that makes much more sense to me, at least how I interpreted the pose. So that's why I made his cape like that, a couple of reasons. He's painted in the exact same way as I just described for the drones. And the base is a mixture of and in yellow, Griffound orange or the other orange, I forget which, and Iron Jaws yellow. I'm, I'm kind of growing on Iron Jaws yellow as my go-to yellow contrast paint. Because the and in yellow does have a more of an orange shade to it for the darker sections that it will seep into. Iron John's yellow is a much more yellow is a much more consistent yellow. It doesn't offer as much shade as we're about to see as we talk about Charles's wheelchair in a second, 
But yeah, I don't really have much else to say about Ultron. Uh, it was the same red, bow red, for his cape. I tried to just use a normal gold paint to pick out the trims. Didn't really stand out too much, but I didn't want to risk trying to pick them out because I feel like they weren't fully defined. I, I went a bit too heavy with the spray paint when I was base coating them, I think. So that's it. That is the starter box finally done. I'm really getting through the Crisis Protocol stuff after so many months and or years. So Professor X himself, as I was just saying, his wheelchair is in that Iron Jaws yellow. Also, he's a bit of a weird one because if you look at the official paint job, he's wearing a white suit and I can't remember what colour tie he's wearing. But then if you look at his stat card, he is drawn or coloured in the same way as he was in the 90s cartoon. So that's what I've emulated because that's how I see him. I love that cartoon. So I painted him in those colours as well. It's Militarm Green for his suit. I forget which blues specifically I used for his tie. Probably Frostheart with um, Ultramarine's blue for the stripes and Gulliman Flesh for his flesh tone. Super quick. Uh, not done super well in his first showing on the table, but I'll, I'll make sure to have another one soon. Flesh Terror Red for his, um, his cover that's on his knees, by the way. And that's about it. I used the Apothecary White wash for the like plume of smoke that's keeping him aloft. Not much to say about him, he was super quick. Um, if you wanted to add more definition to the chair, you could have used the and Yellow, but then you would have those kind of orange shades in the recesses. And I remember his chair being quite bright yellow, so that's why I did it like that. But Super simple, don't have much else to say about him. Charles Dunn. What I do have a lot to say about though is the last miniature we have today which it's a miniature, but he is large. It is Sandman and his two sand pylons, constructions, whatever they're called, his minions for how his rules work. And I think I mentioned a long time ago, I've been doing some tests with a new contrast paint, which is Agros Dunes. I've actually ended up using it quite a bit. And that was what I had in mind for using it for a sand color tone. Now, the official paint job is much more yellow kind of tone. I'm not sure what I would have used. I kind of wish it was a bit brighter and more yellow upon now finishing it and seeing it. Um, I'm not sure what I would use because Iron Jaws Yellow is too yellow, Yandin Yellow is too yellow, and what's the other one? Iron Fist Yellow. It's just pure yellow and has terrible shading. Like It's not a great contrast paint. So in terms of contrast paint, I think this was still my best option. I'm not sure what I could do if there was like a very, very light yellow wash you could go over it with. But it looks like sand, it's just a bit a bit more like dirt. I think that's the, my problem with it, that's where I kind of went wrong. But I mean, quickly look at his sand constructs, which are just various bits of scenery <laughs> getting consumed by the sand. This is a lamppost that's been broken in half. Agros Dunes, Lead Belcher Silver, Non Oil, simple as. And there's some like bricks everywhere at the back there as well. And this is my favourite one for hand. I tried to plug up the mould lines for where the hand has stuck together when I assembled them, just when I was, after I spray painted these, but then I just used a pot of grey sear to try and plug up some of the gaps, and it doesn't seem to have worked, and I, I felt like I did it right, but I don't know, the paint just seeped through, so now the mould lines are pretty obvious, unfortunately, if you look from certain angles, but the model itself, I just love that it's just a giant hand coming out of the, the sand and the construction and the rubble. I used um, Storm Vermin fur, didn't use a contrast paint to just straight up pick out the concrete. I didn't see the need in going over it with a contrast paint first. But for Sandman himself, very, very cool looking miniature. He's got pipes sticking out of him. He's going to wallop Spider-Man. Just a really cool miniature. I, kind of, I haven't tried him on the table yet, to be clear, but I am aware that he's not that great. It's such a shame because the miniature, which I hope is in focus, seems to be... It's just so cool. He's got part of a traffic light there, he's got construction blocks, and he's got part of his skin formed, and of course his trademark green shirt. The official main job only has it as one colour, and then in the art, and indeed in the original cartoon, it's two-tone green, so I used uh, Warp Lightning for the darker parts, and Mantis Warrior green for the other parts. No, the, oh, the flesh tone that's for the, the undead guys in Warhammer Fantasy. Uh, I'm forgetting what it's called, I'll have to put it on the screen. It's, it's one I've been using intermittently, not much, but it fitted perfectly as the colour I was looking for for his shirt. Gloomin Flesh for his skin tone, and Wildwood for his hair. His hair is also very, very textured, strangely. It makes him look like how Norman Osborn looked in that old Spider-Man cartoon from the 90s, because he had really stupid, weird, lined black and red hair, I think it was. Like, it looks so strange. He's got that same pattern. Like, if I'd done that, or been able to pick out 
the two two tones it would have looked just like Norman Osborn from that whole cartoon so I don't remember Sandman's hair like that it's certainly not like that in the art or, or anywhere else it just seems very strangely textured also this this bit of metal here very wobbly uh, in the official paint job it's actually exceptionally hard to see the metal sticking out of him it's done from such an angle kind of like that angle you don't really see this pipe unless you you can just about make it out if you actually pay attention to the like pack shot this one up here has been airbrushed out like it just isn't there so I'm not sure what's up with that have I mentioned this before that's one of my pet hates with product shots that uh, Atomic Mask games do other box shots aren't bad sometimes they miss stuff like sometimes they're positioned weird so the scale is completely off Sometimes they accidentally airbrush out stuff like this. The thing I have a big problem with is when they do like those dramatic shots of say like here's the miniatures in a city setting. They always use Photoshop to make stuff appear shinier. Like if there's going to be a blast of energy or lightning, they apply Photoshop filters to them really obviously. If, you have, if you've never noticed, go look, you'll see them once I've told you they're there. And it's really distracting. You've done fantastic paint jobs. You don't need to pretend by adding Photoshop filters. It, it's terrible. Do, do not do that. But anyway, that's a story for another day. And that is Sandman done. And that is going to conclude another Getting Stuff Painted. I probably rambled on again as is tradition. Feel free to show me what you've been painting if you follow me on Blue Sky or are in my Discord. You can find the links to some of my area, other areas. You can find me in the description box. Swing by stream if you need an invite to the Discord, I'll give them out freely. Um, and that's it. Next time there will be... Well, actually, there might be a surprise next time because I've actually just been assembling something. I'm finally getting off my you-know-what to get around to painting in an effort to bring some variety, or new variety, to the channel. Uh, there will be some more Crisis Protocol. I want to get Electro finished because then that's the Sinister Six box done. And beyond that, I'd like to get started on the new Asgardians, but... Who knows? Yeah, I can't really commit to anything else. You'll have to see. You'll just have to wait and see. Either way, I hope this inspires you to get through your pile of grey shame. It doesn't matter if you're a good painter or not. That will come with time. All that matters is you enjoy the process. Thank you for watching. Thank you for the support. Enjoy the rest of your day. And I shall see you in roughly two weeks for another update. Until then, to that for now.